Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second video on this new booklet. It's blue, and it says on top here, Proportional Reasoning 3. So you should have that book already. And we already done the first lesson, so I'm scrolling by those pages. These were from video one. So we learned about the double number line. This is on proportional reasoning. And proportional reasoning means a constant going up or down of your numbers. So there's no, um, it doesn't change. And it goes through, if you graph the line, it'll go through zero, zero, which is the, which is the origin. Okay, so we're starting on page 10, and this part is homework. Please write on top if you have homework or if it's notes. These are very easy questions. You don't need a calculator. It says here, best buy problem. So we're figuring out which is a better buy. Like when you buy something, is it more expensive or less expensive? We will use tables, graphs, and equations. The equation is a linear equation. Why is mx plus b that we have studied so far? To learn more about the behavior of proportional relationships. Okay, getting started, circle the better buy for each situation below and explain your reasoning. No calculators are necessary. So you comparing the oranges in this store, and in this store, and then the bananas in this store and in this store, where would you buy them? Of course, you wanna get the cheaper price. Down here, Healthy Crunch, two for 250. This store has it two for 275. It's easy to see which is the better buy. And then um, it's going to ask you these questions. So it's just a little bit of reading and a little bit of thinking. So please do it. The second page we're going to do together. So this is notes. And these are two stores, Socks R Us and Crazy Socks. So it's a pair, it's pa apparently about socks, buying socks, which this is not how you spell socks. Okay, by the way, socks is S-O-K-C-K. -K. It's just the name of the store, like Toys R Us. Okay, so for in that, in this store, you can buy two pairs. We have to have a starting point. We cannot do it without having something to go by for $3. And then crazy socks, you can buy five pairs for $6. Now, some of you say, well, this is half of six, so this should be half of five. We can't buy two and a half pairs of socks. So that's the thing. You have to think more life, what is it asking here? What are we dealing with? So where would you go to buy your socks if you need to save money? This is the question. Now the number five is not the one to go by, neither is the number two, it's the cost for how many? Yeah, so don't go, oh, this is, the, I get five pairs here, so this must be better. No, it's not about the five pairs, it's about the cost versus how many you get, okay? That's called a unit price. We talked about that in the last video. Okay, so we're going to find the unit price, which is the price for one item. Um, so one pair of socks. Is $3 divided by two, because there's two of them. So that means that each one sock is $1.50. Use your calculator on that one. Three divided by two is $1.50 per sock. On this one, we're gonna do that one, a theme, one pair, find unit price, one pair of socks is six divided by five. There's $6 and there's five of them. Now use your calculator and you'll see that you will get 1.2, which means it's a dollar twenty. When we talk about money, you have to have two digits here, two decimals after the decimal point per sock. So you see it's cheaper here 
but it's not about getting more socks. It's about how much is one pair cost. So you always want to find the unit price by dividing. Okay, if you're not sure which way to divide, think about what answer would make more sense. Sometimes I have to also go back and and change my division because division is um, the order is important. And sometimes my answer doesn't make any sense. So therefore I, I reverse it and divide the other way and it makes more sense, okay? So crazy socks is the better buy here. And right here is the reason. Now it gets a little trickier. Of course, it always does, right? I don't like that color. Let's see this one. Okay. Now I'm going to say express. Hopefully you can see this lovely green. Express the relationship, which is a proportional relationship because it always goes up by $1.50 or $1.20. What is they're talking about relationship is the, the relationship is the number of socks versus money, how much it costs. Those are the two items we have. That's the relationship, input, output. With a table, graph and an equation. The equation is always in the linear form y equals mx plus b. Okay, so we're going to start with a table. So the table, I'm going to make it vertical. So let's see where I start. I'm gonna put a line straight down here. And across, that's four socks or us. Oh, I'm spelling it. And the input is um, the uh, number of socks and the output is the cost because the cost depends on how many socks you buy. That's called the dependent variable versus the independent variable. So the independent variable comes first, okay? Usually the cost is the second one because the cost always depends on how many you buy, okay? So we have two socks cost $3. That's our first start, right? Two dollars, $3 cost is in dollars. Then um, if we have four socks, I'm gonna double that number, it's six, it's proportional. So double of two is four socks, therefore I pay $6. Then it gets a little trickier. Then I'm having eight socks. Well, eight socks is again, twice of four. So that has to be twice the cost. So that means it's $12. Now we're gonna bring it to 10 socks. Mm, 10 socks is five times, 10 is five times two. That means it has to be three times five is $15. And I want the unit price. It's a one sock costs, uh, how much did we say, $1.50? And then we have no socks, cost no money. That's important. That makes it proportional. See, we're always going up by, it's a proportion. And that's the first one. The second one is crazy socks. And again, I have to draw a straight line. I'm gonna put it over here. Well, I'm gonna put it here because I still have to graph this thing. So I have to think how much room do I need? Think ahead with your workspace. And I'm gonna draw this. So number of socks. 
call it that, and this is your cost. And on our one, we have five socks for $6. That's our starting information on top of the page, right? So if I make it double, then I have 10 socks for double is $12. That's proportional. If I have 15 socks, if I buy 15 socks, the 15 is three times five. So I have to multiply this by three, that's $18. If I buy 20 socks, I'm gonna double the 10. The 10 is 12, the 20 is double, so that's $24, just to show you. I'm not going to graph this number, this is way too high. And um, I have one sock cost $1.20. If I buy no socks, it's zero. Okay, notice that 10 socks for $15 here, and here I only have to be $12. Some of you might say there's not much difference in the unit price. It's only 30 cents, who cares? But if, as you buy bigger quantities, it does make a difference. There's a $3 difference. Um, think about if you're a merchant that buys merchandise to sell, you wanna buy a whole bunch to sell, then it really pays off to study where you get the better buy. And then last, we're gonna make a graph. So we, oh, and then we have to write an equation. Oops, let's see a nice color for the graph. Let's make this one. So a graph is, uh, notice all my numbers are positive. So I only need quadrant one, which is this one, the first one, where all my numbers are positive. By the way, this is your X. This is your Y. Input, X, output, Y. Okay, so on my X axis, it's the number of socks. You've got to label it. On my Y axis, it's the cost in dollars. I'll just put, now I have to put zero, zero here. That's my origin. This is where it all starts, the graph, because they both have zero, zero. This makes it proportional, okay? And then I have, uh, I'm gonna go up by twos. Now I notice when I see your guys' graphs, how they're labeled, they're not always evenly spaced. The numbers, I always put a tick mark on each square and keep it steady. Don't put it in the half here. And I'm gonna go up by two. You have to go up by the same number. Whatever number you decide on, you can't waver from that. This is the number of socks and the money. I do the same thing. I'm putting a tick mark on each square. The space has to be the same. If you don't, it's gonna get all messed up and see how my money goes up to, let's say 15. So I have to, I can't go one, two, three, four, five, six. I've seen students do that. It doesn't work. You need to think of a bigger number. I'm going to go up to 10, call this $2, $4, $6 eight, 10, oh, I go up to $12. So, okay, so this is how you space your, your X and Y axis. And then we can plot the points, two and three, two and three is about here, four and six, eight and 12, and that's all we need. I'm not going to go to 10. I can do one and 150. That'll be about right here. I don't wanna go up that high. It doesn't matter because you see you have a straight line. It doesn't matter how high you go with your points. Use a ruler. I have to do it freehand. And then it says, use different colors, I think. I'm just gonna call this one socks. The other one I'm going to use blue. That's five and six. Five is, no four, five, yeah, five and six is right here, right? Five is between four and six, 10 and 12, right here. Let's do one more. No, nope, that's all we need. Zero, zero is also on there. That's all, we don't need more than three points to make a straight line and the minimum is two points. You can always make a straight line with two points. So you see, this is cheaper, right? cost is below the other one. Okay, 
So there's our, now comes the equation. That's the last part. That's the part you guys struggle with. Now the equation is your, um, your, how do I go up? Uh, how do I say this? You're always, the rate of change here is $1.50 and here it's $1.20. The rate of change tells you how much you're going up. One sock, pair of socks, $1.50, two is $3.00. Three would be 450 and so on and so forth. That's called rate of change or slope. That's your slope. And there, the y intercept is when x is zero, so that's zero. So when I write my equations, and I'm going to write the first one, I'm going to start with the y, and then comes my slope or my rate of change, then comes my x, and then comes my y intercept, which is zero. Do we need that plus zero? No. That looks odd, odd in math, so we're just gonna leave it off. The second equation, start with the y. Here's your rate of change, your unit price. Then comes the x, and then the zero will leave off. So these two are your equations. So that's page 11. Okay, that needs to be all filled in. If you have a hard time keeping up, some of your handwriting is, a uh, little um, slow and you're having a hard time, you're laboring with it. If you um, just write a little bit and watch the video, it's better than not doing anything. I'm not saying do not write notes, but I'm saying if you're really having a hard time and you stop the video just because you cannot keep up with the note keeping, I'd rather have you stop writing it down and simply watch and listen, okay? You can practice a little bit and then stop and listen. That's for my students. I have to unplug this thing. So we're going to page 12 and that page is homework. It's the same thing. So you just look at the previous page to guide you how to do it. We're comparing tortillas, the cost of tortillas. So put homework up here. Very same thing. You fill in the chart, you graph them then um, when x is one, that's your unit rate. I'm gonna write that here. One tortilla costs how much? And then you write your equations, okay? When x is one, what the cost is, is called the unit rate. That, that number goes right here, okay? Okay, next we go to page 13. Yep, these are notes. Again, do not despair if your handwriting, if you can't keep up and um, it's rather, I'd rather have you watch it and understand rather than writing everything down, but please, you're gonna get marked down for not having all your notes done. That's the only thing, okay? All right, so this is practice five. A graph for pizza palace prices is given below. So we only have the graph. Yeah, we have to figure out the numbers from the graph. They also offer delivery for any number of pizza for a fee of $5. This is important. So you have the table says the first one without delivery and the second one is the cost with delivery. I wanna remind you, no matter how many pizzas you order, the delivery is only $5. You don't have to multiply that $5 uh, four times if you want four pizzas. They're not gonna charge you four times the delivery charge because you order four pizza. It's always a one-time a one -time, um, fee, no matter how many pizzas you order. You always have to just add $5 one time just to get that clear, okay? So let's look, we got a clue here. Five pizzas cost $55 with delivery. Now, if we don't have delivery, how much would five pizzas cost? Because $5 is taken out of that, so that's $50, right? Correct? So we're taking the $5 delivery fee off here, and we got our first clue. You always have to have a starting point. We can also see that five, no delivery, it says here. We go to five, and if you go straight up vertically to this line and over, 
it also tells you that the price with no delivery is $50. So that you can take that from the graph and put it here. Okay, I'm gonna start with the one pizza. One pizza is $10, does that make sense? Five cost 50, one cost 10, 50 divided by five. 50 divided by five is 10. I'm just showing you the computations that I'm doing, okay? Now, if I have one for 10 and then two would be 20, am I right? Double as much, three would be 30, no delivery, okay? This is important, four would be $40. So that's my first table. This one, if I wanna know one pizza, I have to do the unit price 55 divided by five is 11. So one pizza is $11 with delivery. Two is 22, I'm just doubling it. Three is 33, four is 44, five is 55. Now my table is complete. Notice this is gonna be more expensive, obviously, if you buy with delivery. So now write equations that relate cost y. Cost is on the y-axis. The other day I asked a student, what, which one is the y-axis, the vertical or the horizontal? They couldn't answer me. Important that you understand the y-axis is vertical. That's why I always label them. And the x-axis is horizontal. That's why I always label it, okay? This is called quadrant one, Roman numeral, because all the numbers are positive in this quadrant. Write equations that relate the cost to the number of pizza. Pizza Palace is $10 per pizza. Is that right? With deliver. oh, without, this is without the delivery. So $10 per X, X is the number of pizzas. See how it tells you that here? Number of pizzas is X. So each X gets multiplied by 10. If X is two, it's two times 10. If X is three, it's three times 10 and so on and so forth. We have no, Y intercept, because if you don't buy any pizzas, you're not paying anything. That's important. This makes it proportional, but we don't need that zero. This one with delivery is a little trickier because we end up paying that $5 extra. How do we deal with that? We're gonna have $11 per pizza, plus the $5 initial for, this is your intercept, y-intercept, this is your rate of change. Okay, one pizza, $11. Or did I do this wrong? You know what, I might've done that wrong, let me think. That doesn't look right, one pizza, $11 is 11 plus five would be 16. If X is five, I'm gonna check my own work. Five times 11 is 55 plus five would be 60. I made a mistake. This is not right. So I'm gonna fix this chart. Uh, this chart is wrong. I hear my students go, oh. Well, we make mistakes and we correct them. That's how it works in life. We need to subtract the $5, which is what one pizza would cost. So the delivery fee is a one-time fee. I'm gonna subtract it for that. So five pizzas really cost $50, but because we subtract the five, we now have these prices just like the other one. It's just that we're adding $5 each time. So our rate of change, our um, cost for one is still at $10, but we add $5 at the end. So now it's correct. I had to think about that. Did you see how I checked it? I plugged in for X5 and I should have gotten 55. Instead, I got 60. So I knew I made a mistake. So each pizza costs $10 plus the $5 delivery fee. Guess what? The $5 delivery fee is your y-intercept, okay? So that, <clears throat> that makes it not proportional because it has to go to zero, through zero, zero. This one is proportional. Okay, compare unit prices for each store, use a calculator if needed. No delivery, my first 
table here. So you go buy it yourself. You go there to the store yourself. Fifty dollars for five pizza makes it forty dollars for four pizzas. Thirty dollars for three pizzas. Twenty dollars for two pizzas. Ten dollars for one pizza. The unit price is ten, and it stays the same each time because when you divide those numbers, forty divided by four is ten. They all end up being 10. Let's go to the with delivery. With delivery, we have cost in dollars 55. See now here they want the unit price in dollars and I have 11, but I'm not sure. Yeah, see now here they want, they put, I have to put 11 and up here, I did not put 11. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Baffling. Because this equation works for this table. But now we got back to unit price 11. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna. I mean, the pizza costs the same. It's just the $5 extra you pay. So I'm just going to make minus the delivery fee, which makes it 50. It's still 10. 45 minus five is 40 divided by four. It's still 10. 35, take away the $5 delivery makes it 30 divided by three is 10. 25, I think, divided by minus $5 delivery fee makes, and then divide by two, makes it still 10. 15 minus five divided by one is simply uh, 10. So unit price, I mean, the pizza costs the same whether you have it delivered, it's just that extra $5. So I, I have to adjust it like that. My notes say something else that I made last year or a couple years before. I wasn't thinking it through very carefully. Which of these situations represents a proportional relationship? No delivery. Because it goes through the origin um, graph. Goes through origin. Like right here, see that? That's the origin. I'm just gonna call it zero, zero origin. And it's a straight line. It has to be a straight line to be proportional. Which of these situations does not delivery, does not uh, have a proportional relationship? Because the graph starts at zero five. Okay, so when I graph this, this one right here, um, oh gosh, this doesn't look right. It's actually, oh, it's 45. Now I get it. It's 45 because we're having to add the $5. Now I got it. Five. It's 30 but plus the five. I have to put it back. <laughs> if you add, if you buy one pizza, you pay $15. The 10 plus the five. So one starts at 15. So if this is 50, this is 40. 30, 20, $10. So one starts, so we start at uh, my zero goes with five. This makes no sense because you don't buy any pizzas, you don't pay the $5, but mathematically speaking, you have to do that. Two pizzas 
is 25. That's a lot right here. Three pizzas is 35. 20, what is this? Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40. Three pizzas should be about here. Oh, 35, yep, yeah, there it is. So you see how that line is a little bit above the other one, but it's still constant. It's still a straight line, but it keeps long running alongside with delivery because we have to add those $5. And it starts here, and that's what makes it not proportional. Okay, sorry about this little goof up here. Yeah, I apologize. I had to think this through a little bit, but that's how math is. You sometimes have to catch yourself. We're going to page 14. Page 14 is actually homework. So put HW on top, ticket prices. So we're buying tickets here and then we're going to graph it. And then it's going to ask you if it's proportional. If it goes through zero, zero, yes. And if it's a straight line, your, your graph. So number of tickets, if you buy one ticket, the cost is $3. Cost divided by ticket is three divided by one is three. So one ticket is $3. This is your unit price. What is if you buy zero tickets? I'll put that up here the cost would be zero. This is why your graph starts at zero, zero. So you already know that it's proportional because I'm sure it goes up at a constant rate, which is the three. Yeah, two tickets would be six, three tickets would be nine, four tickets would be 12, five tickets would be $15. So it's always adding three, constant rate of change. That's also your slope. Hope you know where to put it if you have to write an equation. So this is page 14. Then we're done. Oops, this is already the next lesson, 3.3, .3, which is scale drawings, which is kind of fun. But this lesson is done. Good luck to you. And I'll see you later.